Hello and a good morning, good afternoon, and a very good evening to you, the good people of the tube. Hope you are today, hope you're feeling grand and those when you will. Hi there everybody. Today we are going to be talking about the basically what I was doing in intro drum, volume swells, violining, whatever you want to call it. I call it beautiful. Um, <laughs> It's, it's literally one of my favourite things to do on guitar, that. I, I mean, I'll call it violining, because uh, that's the, uh, that, 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 that to me is kind of... It's nowhere near what a violin is, but I like the fact it's got that kind of singy thing a violin has that I love so much. So, you know, especially if you do kind of do pre bends You know, that kind of thing is really cool. Anyway, so I'm going to talk about that today. I've had a few people ask about this in the past, and I'm going to do it. I'm going to cover it as best I can today. I'm going to remove the strap though, because that's probably going to get annoying. Um, so, um, I'll talk about effects in a minute, but let's talk about the principle, like the main principle of violining, and um, and basically kind of like how to do it. So to do that, what I'm going to do actually, I'm going to move the camera back in really close so you can see. Uh, what the devil is going on? So, and this is a really cool technique. This is a technique I think every guitarist should be able to do. Like, you know, it's just one of those techniques that it's just kind of like, it's so, um, um, I can't think of the word. I want to say important, but that's not the word, but it is important. It's a really cool technique. It's, a, it's just a must technique, if I'm being perfectly honest. It's, it's such a cool kind of, textural thing you know you can you can do it it, it it can be incorporated in so many ways this sound it's so cool so uh, so i'll talk about the effects i use in a minute but let's talk about the the principle of it first and then we'll go from there so uh come hither okie dokie so um i always find it easiest to do violining on a strap just because of where the volume is or any of these kind of you know uh guitars that have the volume like there literally next to your strings uh, I find it really hard to do on a Les Paul and a Telecaster, but I will show you that in a bit as well. Um, definitely the hardest guitar in the world to violin on is that one there, the Brian May. But anyway, uh, so um, I like to do it most on a strap because you've got so much control over where you're picking and the volume control. So what I do is I wrap my finger around the volume control. And because you've got those kind of like, you know, as those like, I don't know if you call them serrations or like purfling or whatever you want to call it, on the volume control, it just gives you so much grip. Like, you know, you can just move it with one finger so easily. It's just it's just really cool. And, um, and it's just really easy. So basically what I do is I just wrap my little finger around it. I think my index finger, like my, my sorry, my ring finger comes in every now and again. Yeah, it does. Uh, it kind of like joins the little finger as it gets to kind of like the, 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 the tail end of it. But um, that's kind of like what I'd use there. I suppose it kind of it rolls from a little finger to the to, to my ring finger. Actually, I don't. I've never realised that before. So um, again, I just don't think about this stuff. I just I just kind of do it, so to say. But uh, hopefully, this you know this will be in somewhat informative. Anyway, and basically, what you do is say we're picking a note. Just that note there. Uh, all we do is we turn the volume all the way off on the guitar. Then we hit the note with the volume off, and then roll volume in. And then roll the volume out again. And it's really important to get a nice kind of uh, flow with that roll. You know, it can't just be, you know, that's okay, but it's, it's got no real kind of character to it. It wants to be a nice kind of, you know, nice singy kind of like, kind of thing. Isn't that gorgeous? Uh, what a lovely voice, Dave, you have. Anyway, um, that's what you want, though. It wants to be nice and nice and easy and singy. Uh, you can vibrato the note as well. You can keep the note straight. Or you can vibrato it, make it a little bit more singy. Don't really do this. You know, you don't want to be doing that. It doesn't really sound like a, vo a voice, a vocal thing. So, uh, yeah, and it just, again. If you're going to vibrato, it wants to sound like a voice. You know, it doesn't want to be. Well, I suppose it could be, actually. That's quite cool. But anyway, but I do prefer the more kind of. Um, kind of softy, softy, catchy monkey kind of approach. But anyway, so that's the technique. It's really simple. 
but it's so effective, it's so cool, and we haven't even had the effects yet, so this is just kind of like pre-effects, there's no reverb, there's no delay, it's just dry as a bone. Which in its in itself sounds wicked, but when you add reverb, delay, and chorus, it sounds even better. But anyway, so uh, so that's the technique. Really, 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 really simple. Uh, there's not there's nothing there's nothing really to it at all. Uh, if I'm being perfectly honest, but it's such an important technique, and I would recommend any guitarist uh, get this uh, in their skill set because you can do so much with it. It's really really cool. So uh, just to show you really quickly. Um, Oh, I didn't bring my Telecaster down. That's clever. Um, on a on something like a Les Paul, for instance, where the volume is further away, what you have to do here is a little different. It's a little bit. Um, it's a little bit more in kind of involved. I mean, it's it's probably best to be honest with you to always do it on the on the neck humbuck. But you can do it on the bridge. It's just further to go. Uh, actually, the Revelation's got a bit of an advantage to be honest with you because the the uh, the pots actually slope this way. On a normal Les Paul, they obviously slope backwards. Uh, so I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll, I'll get uh, uh, I'll get my uh, lemon drop in a sec, and uh, I'll show you that. But on this one, you can actually do it. So actually, yeah. Let I tell you, everybody. Let me get the lemon drop because it'll be it'll be more fair. Um, oop, that's, that's not coming out very easily. Okay, here we go. Ah. It's going well, I'm telling you. All right, okay. So, um, on my lemon drop, I only have a master volume though, so uh, I don't have the ability to use this one. But as you can see, these are further away. You know, you can't, you kind of can, but that position to roll in a note is is very, very, very awkward to do. So you don't really, you know, you don't want to be doing that. So what you want to do with like a Les Paul style guitar or, or a or a guitar like this where the volume's further away from a string is it's a case of like being really speedy if you will to get to the volume thing so you hit the note and it's basically the same kind of technique again with the ro rolling on rolling off kind of thing but you've got to kind of like accommodate if you will to, to the guitar so you hit the note and then roll in then roll out and then hit the note so this, your right hand's got to be fast, you know, but it is doable. You know, it's not, it's not impossible, but I just believe personally the Strat or any guitar where the volume control is literally there is the easiest to do it on. It, it just makes life so much easier and, 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 and more pleasant basically to kind of like, um, you know, you're not, you're not kind of like, you know, not struggling to kind of. And the thing about Les Paul is, when you're doing it on something like this, um, if you're doing it from a volume control, it, it, it kind of takes away from the singing aspect because you have to be so quick that the notes are short. They're not as long as they can be with a Strat or, or a Strat star guitar or, or any guitar, like I say, with a the volume there. So that does kind of, um, kind of detract from it. So what I would recommend personally, if you've got a Les Paul star guitar like this, um, where, the, where the pots are down here, or any other guitar where the pots are really far away, like say, say for instance, like you know the Brian May down there, uh, or any guitar where the volume's really far away, you want to use a volume pedal. Uh, Mark Knopfler is a great example of this. Uh, if you ever watch Mark Knopfler playing, he always, especially Brothers in Arms, uh, you know, he always has his foot on a volume pedal. And, it, and for a guitar like this, to do those kind of violin-y kind of volume swells, I feel that's really a need. Uh, you don't need it with something like a Strat style guitar, but for a Les Paul style guitar, you, you kind of need it. Telecaster is easier than a Les Paul. I would say the Les Paul's a bit of a pig when it comes down to it. Same with an SG. SGs are actually harder because the, the controls are closer together and they can get a bit fiddly. So any guitar like that really is, is kind of like, you know, it's, it's good to have a volume pedal, really, something like that, if you want to do these kind of volume, violin -y swell things. It just makes it easier, basically. So, um, so what I'm going to do now, I'm going to move back to Mr. Strat. I'm going to put this over here. And we'll move on now to, uh, well, let's move on to effects, shall we? Oh, that's, it's going well. It's going well. I am prepared, I promise. Okay, so, moving on. Okay, so that's the I say that's a basic technique of rolling in, 
rolling off changing note. And the simpler and slower it is, the better it is. And the same thing goes with chords as well. If you're kind of violin, like rolling, rolling in a chord, you know, it wants to be nice and even and easy. You know, that kind of thing. So, um, you know, it's the same principle for chords or something like this. But you have to think... You don't want to be fast with this. It wants to be nice and slow and drawn out and just like you have a lot of space, a lot as much space as you can. It doesn't want to be. Well, it can be, but I don't. I, I feel that detracts from what this kind of technique is. If you, if I'm being perfectly honest, it, it sounds. It sounds cool if you listen to like Ingve Malmsteen or anyone Halen doing it when they're doing it fast. But um, I like the more slowly, slowly approach. It does. It sounds more like a voice, which I, which I definitely prefer. So, so that's the technique. Uh, really simple. Just a rolling technique. I say you play the note with the volume off, roll the volume in, and then roll the volume out. And I say just make sure it's nice and smooth. You don't want to, you don't want to be kind of like really abrupt. You know, just nice and smooth. Um, so, uh, so yeah, just just that kind of thing, really. Nice and easy, nice and smooth. Okay, so now let's talk about effects because although it's really nice to do on its own, dry like that, it, it, it's quite cool. But when you add effects like reverb and delay, this sound comes even more alive than it um, than it is. If you if you if, if that makes any sense, with, without basically. So from this. You can go to, you know, you can stick reverb on and it'll sound even more singy. You know, it's, it's really nice. It's, it's just so much better. So that's a lot of reverb. So this is one of the effects that I use a lot when I do the violin is I tend to kind of max out the reverb. Um, so as much reverb as is humanly possible with whatever you're using and it'll just add so much more atmosphere, you know, without but with it's just got so much more kind of, it's got more kind of taper to it, like, you know, it, it stretches out more and it's just really, really pretty and it, again, it, and you want to be kind of going for that thing of you want it to sound like a voice, you know, you, you kind of imagine you singing it, like, no, 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 no. God, I'm, oh, God, that's terrible. Don't do that again, Dave. Okay, so, um, so that's reverb. Adds, reverb is really, really glorious to add to this effect. But the most important effect uh, for violining, it by far, no ifs, no buts, is delay. Uh, because this is the one that gives you the, um, the kind of tail so to say, to blend notes into each other and to blend chords into single notes and then back into different chords and stuff like that. So for instance, like, you know, so now if we uh, stick a delay on with the reverb as well, we can do kind of a, you know, a sing uh, simple line like this. And then chord. And then that chord will hang. So we can now play over it, change. Play over that one. Play over that one. And it, do, it just kind of buys you that time just to kind of go from one thing to another to create like a really nice space. Um, you know, it, it just it's just glorious. And I say, knowing all kind of like different positions of your chords is really cool. Here. So for instance, we're playing in E minor here. Um, so knowing that there's an E minor there, an E minor there, an E minor here, and an E minor there, and an E minor here, gives us the ability to kind of flip flop between different voicings of the same chord. And when you're violining, that's really cool because you can do so much. So you can go from like, say this voicing here, to the really high one, next one. And they've all got different sounds, and the, and the, and the violin effect just makes it um, 
just really like really atmospheric and really ambient and you can do the same thing with a chord progression so if we went e minor d major and c major we can then flip flop between the different voicings so we'll start on e minor e minor so d c Just literally one of the most go I, I could do this all day and in all fairness I have um, it's such a glorious sound so that's with reverb and delay I say without the reverb and delay that's just this it's just not got the atmosphere uh, you can actually get rid of reverb as well to be honest with you if you don't want reverb and you just want delay, delay is the most important part of violining. So this is just uh, delay on its own. So, you know what I mean? You can get around uh, not using, I better not do that because you won't be able to see. Um, you can get around not using reverb, but I do like the, the extra added kind of atmosphere that reverb adds to this to this technique it's really really cool so um so yeah so but delays delay is definitely the most important uh effect in in this kind of uh in this technique by far um and also what it does if you've got a long delay because this is a, this is the delay i have set up a lot of repeats but fairly short in its time but a lot of repeats it's still going And I feel the more repeats, the more kind of like, you know, the more atmosphere you can bring. But the thing is, and also the mix uh, of, the, of the delay, you don't want the mix quieter than your original guitar signal. It wants to be slightly louder than your original signal. So if you listen to this, so if I turn the delay off quick, this is my uh, original signal. Now, if I stick the delay on, uh, the delay that comes immediately after me hitting the guitar will be slightly louder. Not massively, but slightly. Hopefully, be able to hear it. So if I do it again, you can hear it, boom, it jumps out. So bear that in mind, when you're dialing in delay, lots of repeats and make sure the mix, that the, delay, the first delay repeat is louder than your initial signal. And that way, when you do do your, when you uh, uh, fade in the volume, it just sounds neater. And it also gives it power because uh, that initial kind of repeat is louder. Um, Full enough, it's how John Fashanti gets the power for the Don't Forget Me. The Don't Forget Me thing is uh, because his repeat, his first uh, repeat is louder than his initial guitar signal uh, and gives him more, basically gives him a volume boost, basically, is what's going on there. And also, the one thing I like about the delay with loads of repeats and also the... Uh, mix of the delay louder than your initial signal is it slows you down if you try and play fast it just becomes a mess you know it just becomes a cacophony of notes well that's a big word for you dave but if you slow down it, it, it you know it makes you slow down and the moment you slow down you just become uh, let me turn the reverb off again um it just becomes you know more more singy You, know, you can really just hold that note. And again, just like slight vibrato on them. And it's just so much more atmospheric than just kind of like, ah, you know, chaos. Uh, I'm gonna stick a reverb back on. And again, it just adds even a bit more.
it's absolutely blooming glorious. So, um, so yeah, so uh, talked about. Well, I'm going to talk about one more effect in a minute, which I again I have on all the time when doing this because I love it so much, and I like what it adds. Um, but yeah, so the technique is like I say, is fairly simple. Like I say, if you've got something like a Les Paul where the volume controls are further away then I would advise a volume pedal. It is possible to do it without, uh, like, you know, like I showed, but um, it does make life easier if you have like a volume pedal. It's just so much easier. Um, but if you've got a guitar like this, or, or even like a Telecaster or something like that, you know, they're, 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 they're so easy just to get get to. Telecasters are easier than Les Pauls. Um, but the, the only issue I will say with a Telecaster is when you violin with a Telecaster, you're right back here. And... The problem with that is I find the tonality, it, it, I, I don't like, it doesn't really suit the sound if I'm being, you know, in my opinion anyway, because it, it's really sharp. I mean, because if you listen to kind of how the strings are back here near, near the bridge, you know, they're really bright and quite tinny. But the further you go forward, the, the warmer the sound gets. And I don't like the sound of violin in back here. It just sounds really bright and a bit... It doesn't sound as round to when you're over kind of like the middle pickup area. You can kind of hear that ding. There's no kind of like harshness to that, but back here, there's a kind of a ding kind of noise. Um, and I don't like that as much, but you know, uh, to each their own. But it's, you know, that's just per my personal preference, I say. But it is doable on a Telecaster, a lot more so than, say, a Les Paul or an SG. Uh, three three fives are a nightmare because it's like literally somewhere down there. It's like a mile down that way. But again, if you've got a guitar like that, I highly recommend something like a volume pedal. It'll just make it so much easier. And um, you know, it's a, it, it, again, you'll have as much control as I, you know, as as you do on like a Strat style guitar or you know, volume control here guitar uh, with your foot. You know what I mean? If not, maybe even a little bit more control. To be honest with you, I don't. I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, I, I don't really use volume controls that much. I don't really. I don't need to. I don't feel I need to because of the strats. But um, but yeah. So uh, that's what I'd recommend there. So um, moving on to the final effect. This is bit, again. This is an effect I have on all the time when I do violining because I just like what it adds and I stick chorus on. So this is the dry guitar. But if I stick chorus on. Got that warm, it's got that kind of like warble, that, that pulsing boom, 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 boom sound. So now, if I stick, uh, well, if I if I bring in like the E minor chord, uh, let's do it down here actually. If I bring in like an E minor chord without the chorus, it sounds like this. Nothing wrong with that whatsoever. I mean, it still sounds absolutely glorious. But if I kick on the chorus, it'll it'll warm it up, and it'll also give it that pulse that vroom, vroom, vroom sound. And that that modulation just, I think, brings the violin in alive even more. So this is with the chorus now. You can hear that modulation. And I feel it sounds more like a, a synth kind of pad, like a stringy kind of uh, synth sound, which I like loads. So now if I turn that chorus off and I do it without chorus, Still sounds glorious, but kicking back in the chorus. And again, when you get to single notes, I feel it just kind of like makes the notes a little bit richer. So without, with, this is without the chorus. And this is with the chorus. So, one more time. So this is without, I'll let it die away first, actually. So this is without. And then this is with. It's just got a little bit more warmth and a little bit more dimension. And the note does more, so to say. It just sounds like it does more. I 
doing weird dissonant chord patterns. It sounds so weird, but so cool. It's such a glorious effect, it really is. Now, if I take all those effects off, we're back to this. It still sounds pretty cool, but it's not this. That's absolutely glorious. So, um, so yeah, so that, that's it. It's, it's very simple technique. It's a very simple thing, but super, super, super effective. Uh, another thing as well, which I will mention really quickly, I'm gonna just turn the volume down there because it's gonna get loud. Um, another thing you can do with this sound is not violin it and not do this, but tremolo picking. And what I mean by tremolo picking is play the note really, really fast, basically 16th notes. Like that kind of thing, but do it in harmonies, like and, and just major and minor third. So this is a minor third. This is a major third. You can tell one sounds happy, one sounds sad. Sad. It's happy. Um, but this effect, the violin effect, when it's tremolo picked really fast, is really cool. And I use this all. I I, I probably to be honest with you, I probably overuse this in recording. But it does sound really nice. And again, because it's got the tails, it's really good. And I would say when you do uh, do this kind of thing in when you're recording a song and you kind of, you kind of put it in the background, it just uh, it, it sounds like a like a like a synth string section. It doesn't sound like you know it doesn't sound like a string section, a proper string section, but it sounds like a synth. And um, it's all over my songs. I mean, um, you know, when I record a song, I use it all the time to add kind of like you know a, a, a nicer kind of a fatness to the sound and it's absolutely glorious so it's just chorus reverb and delay and it's it's actually it's just a violining tone but it's tremolo picked super super fast and i say when you do it in intervals as well you can follow the chord so um you know if you're playing an e minor here you've got an e minor triad here which is basically this part so if you get rid of that G string note and you just have B and the E on the 17th and uh, 15th fret, you've got an E uh, minor kind of chord, if you will. Uh, it's just this, it's that part of the chord. So if a chord progression is kind of going E, D, and C again, like, like it was earlier on, you've got an E here, you've got a D there, and you've got a C there. So to, if, if it's a big kind of rocky song, or even if it's not, if it's kind of mellow, you can then follow those chords doing the tremolo picky thing with this sound, mix it in, and it'll sound really glorious. So you can do that kind of thing, and it's really, really cool. So, um, and that's it. That's it. That, I mean, that, that's, the, that's the way I do violin, and that's how I use violin. It. Okay. 
It's always got reverb on it, maxed out reverb. Uh, it's always got loads of uh, loads of delay uh, with loads of repeats. And again, really important, your initial signal, um, uh, the delay, first delay repeat needs to be louder than that. You know, so, you know, it wants to bump, bump like that. You know what I mean? It wants to stick out and that'll give you a, a volume boost, so to say. Uh, and it'll just make it more powerful and it'll make it flow better. If you if your delay signal is quieter than um, your initial signal, it won't flow in. It'll just kind of go, Whoo! it'll kind of like jump in. It won't flow in. It, it won't sound as good. So just bear that in mind when, you, when you're dialing in this kind of sound. Um, if this kind of sound it, it, it interests you, you know, make sure that first initial delay is louder than your original signal. So basically turn the mix up or the level of uh, whatever you've got, you know, just turn that up really loud. And just, you know, it'll just... It'll flow. It'll float in. Baby. It'll float, flow and float in. There you go. Um, and it's just glorious. And again, with the chorus, uh, the chorus wants to be kind of... Well, you can have it any way you want, really. Man, I have mine fairly fast. And it detunes quite a bit as well. There's quite a bit of kind of warble in there. But I like what that chorus adds to violining. I mean, I, I do I do, do violin every now and again without the chorus, but I definitely, for me personally, I, I, it has to be there because I just prefer the, the movement it gives, especially on the repeats, because obviously the chorus is going to keep modulating the repeats. So you get that constant warble. So yeah, um, yeah, and that and, and that is it, uh, ladies and gentlemen. That is it. That is it's very very simple, but extremely extremely effective technique. And like I said, I really do recommend this technique to every every single guitarist out there. It's you know even if you don't think you're going to use it, it's still a technique that I would definitely. Um, recommend and i would implore you to kind of look into doing it and just and just trying it out because you just never know when it will fit into a song or a piece of music you're doing or or just practice you know what i mean it, you can do so much with this i mean if you're doing loops or something like that you know uh, you, can, you can do so much with this for for layering purposes and stuff like that and and it's just lovely to get lost in it if i'm being perfectly honest it just it's just nice to kind of like you know to dive in and swim if that makes any sense with it. And just see where it takes you. Again, always just submit to it. Don't fight music. Just submit to it and let it take you. You know what I mean? It knows better than we do. So don't ever try and kind of go, oh, well, you know, I want to go over here. If it doesn't want to do that, you know, you, you don't want to fight it. it it's, it's just not, it's going to be counterproductive. So um, you just never know what's going to come out. It's so cool. And and again, keeping it simple is another thing. You know, don't try and overcomplicate things. Keeping it simple, slow, let it flow, let it flow, and just kind of like create space, basically, is what this is all about. You don't want to be kind of, ah! You know, you want to approach it from a really relaxed kind of standpoint. Even if you're not relaxed in yourself, you know, you want to be kind of like, you know, approaching it from a very calm, I do apologize for my phone, um, calm mindset. You know, you don't want to be diving into it, you know, with a kind of like you know um i want to play fast kind of thing you know or aggressive it's not that kind of style it, it won't fit to the style you can't play this violin thing aggressively it just it doesn't work so um it just sounds it just doesn't sound very good so um so yeah so uh talked about the technique like i say what my technique is like i say i use my little finger and then once my little finger kind of gets to a point my ring finger takes it the rest of the way so it's kind of like I don't know how well you'd be able to see this, but um, it's kind of uh, kind of like like uh, I'll turn the volume down first, Dave. Take the plectrum out of your mouth as well. Good gravy. Okay, so as you're kind of doing that, you can see where my index finger comes in. It just takes it the rest of the way. 
Oh, and that's another thing, quickly, actually, everybody, is you don't have to go from no volume to full volume all the time. Sometimes it's best to go to kind of like, you know, half or three quarters, you know. So, for instance, like, you know, if you're playing a, uh, a note, uh, no, sorry, if you're playing a chord, it might be cool to go full volume. Uh, no, sorry, I tell a lie. If you're playing a chord, it might, be, it might be cool to go kind of like half volume, so to about there. And then when you play a note, full volume. Just glorious. Um, so yeah, basically what you're doing there is like, you know, I was, I was rolling the volume to eight and I was stopping at eight and then rolling it down. And when I went to the single note, I was rolling it to 10. So the chord was never dominating over the, uh, the single note, which it can, can do, kind of can do. So if I did a chord and went all the way to 10 and then played a note, the note can kind of get lost. So, it, you know, in certain respects, that's really cool. But bearing in mind, you don't have to do that all the time. You know, if, you, if you're just kind of halfway on the chord and then full on the note, it just creates a nice kind of, um, a little bit more of a kind of a, a cooler atmosphere kind of thing, so to say. But you can do that. You know, it, it, it's open to you, basically. You can just do whatever you want with this technique. It's such... A wicked technique and it's so important like I say if you've got a guitar where the volume control isn't easy accessible uh, volume uh, volume pedal would definitely be a thing there are also uh, pedals uh, that do this as well there's uh, pedals like the slow gear by boss and uh, multi effects units normally have some kind of um, auto volume kind of uh, effect in them I know the zoom g2 does and I know the line 6 hx does and so m most multi-effects units will have something like this. And if you don't know if it does or not, in the manual it should tell you uh, what effects are in that. And if the manual doesn't, then there's always uh, there's always Google. That will tell you. So yeah, so yeah but uh, I really, I've, I've been meaning to do a video on this for a long time, and I'm, I'm glad I've finally gotten a got to it because it's one of the techniques I use so much. And it's so cool for kind of like, you know, when you're recording or just noodling about or just kind of jamming or, or creating loops and stuff like that. You can do so much with this technique. I say either it's the volume technique or the tremolo picking technique or or whatever, really. You know, there's so much you can do with it. But it's so nice just to kind of like dive in and swim with it because you can just get totally lost in it. And uh, it's just it's just heaven. It's just absolute heaven. It's just absolutely glorious. And I love it so much. It's one of my favorite things to do on a guitar i could just do it for hours you know I could, I could literally sit here for hours and do that so anyway i hope this video has been somewhat informative on the whole violining uh kind of thing and hopefully kind of like show you how i do it and and kind of how i have things set up just to again quickly show you uh just 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 for uh uh just in case i haven't explained things very well but uh, so effects wise so totally dry no effect so this is the reverb. This is how I've got the reverb set. It's basically maxed out. Very deep reverb, with, again, with a lot of decay. So it's still going. Now it's stopped. Uh, and then a chorus with a with a kind of... Uh, I suppose you could call it a kind of a... a, kind of a, a almost detuning, but kind of fast, kind of warble. Like that. And then delay, which is the most important effect when it comes down to violining. You know, the delay is key. The delay is king, if you will, actually, when it comes down to violining. Um, without it, it sounds okay, but with it, it just sounds heaven. So, and with the delay, again, like I say, I cannot stress enough how important it is to have your first delay repeat louder than your guitar's initial signal. So, and that'll just make it... so much nicer and again keep it simple don't try and overcomplicate it keep it simple keep it slow especially if you're doing single notes you know the slower it is the better it'll be and I like um 
Devin Townsend said a thing because Devin, Devin always uses loads of echo and I like what he says because this is the same kind of principle really is it forces you to in interact with your past so if I play a chord and then I play over top of that I'm now interacting with the past and now those notes are interacting with that chord which was the present and now it's the past and, and I can now act, interact with that chord So I like that concept of you, you, you know, it's forcing you to interact with your past and and listen and 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 kind of and see where it wants to go and take you, so to say. So it's really really cool, and I, I just love it. And it's such a cool technique, and it's just so nice. I mean, also you can kind of uh, open tune your guitar. Now let's do that really quick. To something say like, uh, I don't know, what, what can we do? Let's just let's just go uh, dad gas. If you open tune your guitar and turn your volume to about just not very high, you can just kind of like get away with doing these. You can just do so much with with this kind of sound. It doesn't all have to be violining. It's just a soundscapey thing, and it's so cool. But again, you can do soundscape stuff. And because you've got totally different chord voicings, they sound different. I hope this video has been informative anyway people too i'm gonna i'm gonna i'm gonna wrap it up now and uh and finish for the day so i hope this video has been informative hopefully it's kind of shown you it's a very simple technique like i say just make sure when you roll up volume in it's nice and smooth and it's got a flow to it it doesn't want to be kind of like abrupt and ah you know just nice easy nice flow to it keep it calm and relaxed and the simpler the better don't try and overcomplicate it you know you don't need to that's not what this kind of style is about it's about space an atmosphere in creating kind of like you know a, a wash if you will or, or a wall of kind of like you know calming noise it's just absolutely heaven so uh so yeah anyway um hope you enjoyed this video everybody i hope it's been informative uh i really hope you've been informed as usual with a little teaching video i am utterly terrified that these videos are totally naff and rubbish but hopefully there's something in here you can kind of take away and incorporate into your own kind of style and this is how i do violin and it's always got chorus loads of delay and loads of reverb um so yeah so um yeah i hope you enjoyed this video everybody i'll see you again soon for another one have a great morning afternoon and good evening and uh yeah i'll see you again very soon for another one um uh, goodbye now have a really nice chord it's a bit sad actually but that's nice thank you for watching goodbye now